The Chelsea Headhunters have been around since the 1960s, when they were known as the Shed Boys. The Headhunters have extensive ties to both white supremacist and Northern Irish loyalist organisations. The Chelsea Headhunters are one of England's most feared hooligan firms, terrorising fans during the 1980s, heyday of hooliganism. Due to their unionism ideas, the gang has forged connections with Scottish club Rangers and Northern Irish club Linfield. Investigative journalist Donal McIntyre infiltrated them for a programme that aired on the BBC on November 9, 1999, in which McIntyre pretended to be a Chelsea headhunters wannabe. He got a Chelsea tattoo to look authentic, but the diehards were shocked that he went with the despised Millwall Lion emblem rather than the 1960s Chelsea erect lion. He spoke to the racism of the headhunters and their connections to Combat 18 including one high-ranking member who had once been detained for having KKK-related materials in his possession. The program resulted in numerous convictions and arrests. Jason Mariner, one of the headhunters who was convicted and imprisoned as a result of the program, has now authored a book, It's Only a Game, which he claims to have been set up by the BBC and McIntyre. He asserts that false evidence was used to convict them even though there was no video of them committing crimes, and that the incidents were contrived. The Football Factory, a movie by Nick Love, gave a fictionalized portrayal of the headhunters. The violent competition between the firm and the Millwall bushwhackers is the main subject of the movie. The DVD, Jason Mariner, Football Hooligan, was released by Gangster Toy Videos and featured Jason Mariner as the topic. I personally rate them very high, because they always try to take it to the other firms, usually by trying to take their end. I think out of all the clubs, Chelsea have probably tried to take the most ends, even trying it at Millwall, West Ham and Liverpool. I just feel that in a toe-to-toe -to -toe even number battle against the big two, the ICF and the Bushwhackers, they would come out second best. I could be wrong, but that's my gut instinct. The following is a historical timeline of their events. There are many more, but the video could go on for hours and we don't want you getting bored, so here's a few for starters. 1973 Liverpool v Chelsea. A legendary attempt at taking the cop occurred during this match. I believe one of only two times anyone tried it, Man United the other. Around 500 headhunters get into the cop and after being surrounded, stood their ground. The police arrive and surround them from the Scousers until the end of the game. Verified by a Liverpool old boy for me. 1973 Sheffield Wednesday v Chelsea, FA Cup 5th round. Chelsea tried to take the Sheffield home end, Spee and Cop, but were beaten back by Wednesday's firm, who had spanners and an assortment of weapons. Chelsea got revenge after the match by thrashing a large Wednesday mob outside the stadium, 1975 Spurs v Chelsea, relegation decider. Chelsea invade White Hart Lane taking half the Spurs end, with two pitch invasions and continuous fighting. Both sets of fans obviously claim different things, but if you look at the YouTube video, you can clearly see that the firm getting attacked is the Chelsea boys. nineteen seventy six Millwall v Chelsea Chelsea nutters attempt to take the Millwall home end the cold blow lane three sections of Chelsea headhunters are attacked on all sides from the Millwall and even Chelsea vets say they took a beating but amazing they even tried here's the story from a Chelsea fan a small group of us entered the CBL in 1976 77 we were crammed into the highest corner, and our numbers were dwindling as more Chelsea were either snatched or quietly exited. I stayed for the majority of the game, but I had to leave near the finish. I wished I'd stayed in the CBL once I was out on the streets because there were Millwall nutters everywhere, some of them were old dockers in their 50s and 60s. 1976 Bristol Rovers v Chelsea
Chelsea headhunters attacked the Bristol tote end causing mayhem before being escorted out by the police into the away end. But more trouble takes place inside and outside the ground. 1976 Bolton v Chelsea. Chelsea's headhunters take the Bolton home end the lever. Already in the ground before the match, about 200 Chelsea fans from the embankment away end run onto the pitch and into the lever end in a sort of pincer movement attack once the game did eventually start. 1977 Chelsea v Millwall. Millwall try to take the shed but get beat back and onto the pitch. Fighting all game and after the match. One thousand nine hundred and seventy seven Wolves v Chelsea. An infamous affair, mainly because Chelsea fans were supposed to be banned after causing trouble at previous matches in the old Division 2. But they weren't going to miss this promotion decider, and roughly five thousand turned up on the Wolves' south bank. Lots of trouble inside the ground with both sets of supporters celebrating on the pitch until it all got rather nasty with running battles on the pitch and outside the ground. Nineteen seventy eight Wolves v Chelsea. An infamous event for Wolves fans. The story goes that Chelsea's firm was in the South Bank at Molineux. At the time the Wolves firm were also in the South Bank and they were separated by a high metal fence, so they obviously couldn't get at each other. Knowing this Chelsea left the South Bank with about 15 minutes to go and went round to the North Bank where they were let in by someone and they created havoc, forcing fans to get crushed in a mini Hillsborough situation. Many fans were crushed, and Wolves fans have since forever criticised Chelsea's firm for not attacking them in the South Bank but rather going round to the easy target the North Bank where there were mainly older non-hooligans, women and kids. 1979 Aston Villa v Chelsea. Another of those, did they didn't they, scenarios, where Chelsea claimed to have taken the Holt end but Villa say they didn't. What is clear is that Chelsea were certainly in the Holt end and lots of trouble took place because of that. 1979 Derby v Chelsea. Serious disorder as the headhunters take Derby's end. The trouble was featured on all the news programs and even a documentary at the time. 1980 Bristol Rovers v Chelsea. Lots of trouble once again and Chelsea fans getting up to no good as you can tell from the video. nineteen eighty two chelsea v leeds serious disorder from the headhunters invading the pitch several times trying to get at the leeds firm nineteen eighty three huddersfield v chelsea fa cup third round worst day ever for violence in huddersfield one all in front of a crowd of over 17,000 people, Chelsea were very intimidating that day and took the terrace. After the game a Chelsea fan was killed with a queue by a group of youths. 
1983 Derby v Chelsea, FA Cup fourth round. Chelsea fans causing all sorts of problems and fighting on the pitch. Many people taken to hospital and 25 fans arrested on the day, with more afterwards. 1984 Cardiff v Chelsea. Chelsea take the Grange, Cardiff's end. Pitch invasions, fighting in the stands, the lot. Outside the ground a mass brawl takes place all the way back to Cardiff Central Station. 1984 Man City v Chelsea. For most City veterans, Chelsea stands out as the total invasion it was. Man City's home end, the Kipax was taken and Chelsea held three sides of the ground. Pitch invasions, fighting in the terraces, running amok in the streets. An infamous Friday night out for the Chelsea headhunters in 1984. nineteen eighty five Sunderland v Chelsea milk cup semi-final first leg Chelsea claimed to have taken the home end at this match so it's interesting to hear the Sunderland perspective of it all forum fan coach East two feet told us milk cup semi-final first leg the five thousand Chelsea supporters were the nastiest I've ever seen at Roker making Rangers appear like a church picnic we were walking through when they forced the massive gates open and flooded out onto the streets behind the Roker end after the game, and we got caught up in it. They wreaked havoc in many locations during the next hour, including Roker Avenue, when they attacked the Wheat Sheaf, which had a large number of Voxeyes imprisoned inside. 1985 Chelsea v Sunderland, Milk Cup second leg. We let Sunderland fan Java tell it. I have to admit, the Chelsea supporters that night were the most furious, hate-filled supporters I have ever seen. And that includes numerous visits to Millwall, Leeds, Birmingham, and Borough. I believe that the hospitalization of a couple of their followers at Roker and the ensuing London media attention had riled them up, and Ken Bates, of course, chimed in with comments about how naughty our fans had been. Given the horde that Chelsea brought to Roker that night, it's ironic to say the least. The basic line was that Chelsea in 1985 were the worst of the worst, they had to protect their reputation, and this was the most important game they had played in a long time. Nineteen eighty-eight Chelsea v Middlesbrough, Playoffs called, the Battle of Stamford Bridge, for good reason. Chelsea were relegated and Borough promoted. Chelsea fans invaded the pitch and tried several times to get at the 5,000 celebrating Borough fans. Police horses tried to quell the trouble, but it was a losing battle. nineteen eighty nine leicester v chelsea legend has it that chelsea took over ten thousand to leicester that day there was carnage they wrecked the place leicester were completely overrun even the police were bottling it nineteen ninety bristol city v chelsea trouble throughout the day and during the game the cops were unable to maintain control and there was complete chaos in the downpour the footage on youtube reveals how crowded chelsea's end was 1995 Chelsea v Millwall, FA Cup. Chelsea's hardliners attempted a pitch invasion but were pushed back by riot police mounted on horses. Millwall got run out of the west stand so had to regroup in the north stand then try and retrieve their reputation in the surrounding streets after the match. More chaos. 
2010 Chelsea v Cardiff, FA Cup. During a fifth-round FA Cup tie in 2010, Chelsea Headhunters and Cardiff City's Soul Crew battled. The Headhunters would wreak havoc on the Soul Crew and the Cops in a drug and alcohol fueled rampage. When Operation Turnhill was undertaken to discover and convict those responsible, a police officer's jaw was crushed and 24 people were eventually convicted. twenty fourteen PSG v Chelsea, Champions League. Before a Champions League quarter final against PSG, the headhunters were involved in pre planned violence in France, with roughly three hundred hooligans entering France through Belgium to evade detection. There have been many more events but you'll have to come back for more Headhunters videos. Please don't forget to subscribe. It really helps the channel.